Hey everybody, Andy Pondrick with Pheasants Forever. I've had this idea for a while on an out-of-state pheasant hunt, but doing it as cheap as possible so the average Joe can take off and, and take a fun trip without having to break the bank. So I'm loaded up with my four-year-old Black Lab Kona. We are on our way to South Dakota for the first time. We're really excited to meet up with Ben from Onyx Hunt, see if we can get on top of some of these late season roosters. Ride along with us as we pinch pennies and try and chase some of these birds on a budget. When you're out on the road, food can actually be one of the more expensive parts of the trip. To offset some of that cost, we'd recommend raiding your pantry and stocking up on some of the essentials you might need. We knew we still had to stock up on some supplies, so we hit the store searching for deals, focusing on foods that will fill us up while still being easy to prepare. So we made our first stop, taking into account we're gonna have continental breakfast the two mornings. We figured we'd have a couple meals for two to three guys, so uh, all in all, we were able to spend $38.89 for, for the three days, so it should be a pretty solid start to the trip. Going into the trip, we knew that our driving expenses would be the biggest variable. And at $3.27 a gallon, we thought we were spending a lot. Hunting close to the hotel would help keep driving costs down. But we also knew birds don't always cooperate, and that meant we might need to beef up our gas budget a bit. Considering we're in a full-size SUV, Using Onyx to scout ahead of time will be critical in minimizing our drive times. We've got what looks like some okay cover on the public land across from a cut cornfield. With a couple hours of daylight left when I pulled into town and Ben still running a bit behind, I wanted to maximize the cost of my out-of-state license. So Kona and I hit the field for a bonus night on what was supposed to be just a two-day trip. Arm up, let's go, arm up. While Kona and I didn't find any roosters, it was good to cut him loose after the long drive. We checked into the hotel and got lucky with some unseasonably warm weather, which made for an ideal curbside cookout. We woke up early the next morning and met up with Ben to make a plan for day one. There's some of these pieces that have, you know, smaller features within them, like, all right, you know, there's, there's a field, it looks like there's some grass and more of a slough area here. We've kind of marked a handful of areas within 10 minutes of each other. So let's go take a look at a few spots, load up and, and get after it. We pulled up to our first spot and quickly realized that even with the best online scouting tools at your disposal, public land and mother nature can still throw a curveball. With severe drought conditions across much of the country, emergency hanging and grazing changed some of the landscape. But in this case, it may have actually worked in our favor. These management practices created additional edges and contained cover, making this normally large field much more approachable. Then you got corn here, you got corn in the back corner. It looked like the, this was tilled up already behind, but good diversity of habitat. We got something to work for here. <laughs> exactly. All right. All right, let's, let's do it. it. Hey, Pop, you ready? Let's go. Come on. Right, let's find them. It's good to see there's birds out here. Yeah, yeah, birds are good. This one right here is the one I'm... Because you can't really do much with this. But this one could be interesting. You just want to walk this edge out. I'll just walk this end. Good shot. Nice. Good work, Herbert. Here. Here. Good job. Feels good. Knock the rust off. Herbert, good find, my friend. Yeah, I'm surprised uh, he held in that. All those ends took off in front yeah. of him, and he was way tighter than the rest. That first shot, I, <laughs> I was like, yeah, <laughs> off the shoulder. And I was like, all right, I better hit this thing. <laughs> Good point, good bird. Yeah. All right, let's do it again. Nice shot. Those dogs were getting, like they were just scrambling. It's like we walked, it had been a half a mile of tree line. We didn't see anything. My dog started to get birdie at the end, and I was like, there's got to be something out here. Nice little spot here. I think that bird's over here. Herbie, dead bird right here. Let's go. Good boy. Come on, bud. 
Oh, South Dakota Wiley Rooster. There's these tree belts, yeah. look like there's some egg. And there's obviously water in these pictures. It doesn't look like it's too thick around the edges, right. so you can maybe walk around that. There's one. one. Good, nice little water retrieve in here. Another hint. All hands or no? Yeah. Really good sign though. We'll let the doggies go in there. We'll stay up here. Go, huh? A little too far. That was a good number of birds. A lot of hens, but there was. That looked good. Oh, there's, there's one. Brewster! Nice shot! Heck yeah! That's good work, yeah, huh? buddy. That's what I'm talking about. Good dog! Good job, Herb. Sweet. You Thank Brandon. you very much. God. Yeah, that wasn't bad. We pushed them right out, and yeah. like you were saying, they were getting up a ways ahead of us to I start like there. 50, it's just like, I took some shots, but it was a couple of those I should have hit, but just like just on the edge, but well, this is perfect right here. We walk them all the way to the corner, and we're turning around thinking we got nothing left, and the dogs push them hard right to the water's edge. It was great for Kona and I to get that first South Dakota rooster in the bag. Nope, head. After putting up a good number of birds in the first two fields, we were optimistic about what our final field of the day had in store. Yeah, because it's probably it's the longest. I don't want to get wet. No cattail plug. I know. Find him, Herb. Find it. Dang it! Oh! Ah! No! It was. This. Oh! Dang it! It was hung like this. Oh, that was an easy shot. It just, I could hear a trigger pull. It goes, <laughs> sorry. Uh. <laughs> yeah, maybe find a couple more for me, big fella. While the afternoon didn't produce as well as the morning, our three birds were plenty to enjoy on the tailgate back at the hotel. Fresh pheasant and another beautiful sunset made for a perfect nightcap to our first full day on the prairie. Last morning of the trip, we've uh, had pretty good luck so far. Yesterday was pretty good, but we're gonna turn the trucks a little further east and, and head a little back towards home. We're looking forward to meeting up with our buddy Jake Hansen and adding another dog to the mix. But first, we had to stop for gas. It's definitely a little windier today. Kind of the story of, of the trip out here is like a lot of emergency hang. Like this spot looks like it's been grazed. You can tell it like some of the sloughs have been trampled down and whatnot, but WPA here. A little change of pace, but again, you know, just those kind of those cattail sloughs that are easy enough for two people to manage it kind of snaking around and that's been kind of the common denominator cattails and corn so Restart! love it when a plan comes together right he did the exact thing you were talking about yep. hit that win and he was yeah, that was a good shot, man. That thing had to be good. Like, you got out there a little bit, so yeah, good Thank work. You. Yeah, dogs are in there working hard on that one. Hey, on the board. good boy. Yeah. Come up. 
That's worse than gross hunting. What's up? Let's go, man. Ben Bredigan. Ben, I'm Jake. Jake. Jake Hansen. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet, to meet you. you in person, Andy. Yeah, absolutely. Jake is a regional representative for Pheasants Forever in South Dakota, which allowed us to tap into some great local knowledge. Whenever you travel to new locations, don't be afraid to ask around on how other hunters are doing. Whether you meet in the field or around the breakfast table at the hotel, you'd be surprised at what they're willing to tell you. Keep your gun loaded. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> so here we are, yep. and that's a game production area. Yep. There is, as you can see, walk-in access. I think that's walk-in access just across the road, so yeah. we should check that out. This property has habitat, it has water, a water source for um, wildlife, and then it also has food plots. And so those are kind of the three things that I look for as an upland hunter. Something for the birds to eat, is there water, is there cover? We've got it all here, hopefully the birds cooperate. Oh, let's get a bird up. Moving now, 91 yards, 97, 96, 10, 98, 87, 78, that must have been the bird that they were after. Probably stay on the edge of the dogs can work to, I don't know that we'd, we might run out of public there too. Come on buddy. And Yep. Is that a rooster? That's a rooster. Lazy day, yep. nice day. I would have thought maybe they'd be loafing in the yep. food plots, but they definitely were in the thick cover, and that's where we've kicked them out of. Yep. Quite a few birds out of this property. A lot of birds. Yep. A lot of Nothing birds. in my game bag. No, we got to keep working on that. <laughs> <laughs> no clue where my dog is. Come on, but come on, let's go. We got one more Hail Mary. We're gonna hit uh, the south side of the WPA that's got corn on one side and sloughs running along the edge. Cattails and corn has been the recipe, so let's, let's hope it comes through one more time. While we didn't end up filling our freezers by any stretch, we executed our intended plan by taking on South Dakota without breaking the bank. The public land is out there, and in this trip we proved that no matter what your budget is, with a little bit of pre-scouting and hard work, there are birds to be found. In the end, it's not about the number of birds we shot, but more about the memories we created and the friendships we fostered. And you can't put a price tag on that.